everyone, it's Dr. Mack, and today we are talking about frequency distributions, how to create them, how to interpret them, and all of that good stuff. So there is a PowerPoint presentation that goes along with the uh, video today. So you may want to go ahead and pause right now, download the PowerPoint so that you can kind of follow along as we go. So to start off with, we are moving into some actual statistics today. Um, we are going to start with what are called univariate statistics. So univariate means one variable or a single variable that we are um, analyzing. Later on in the semester, we'll get to bivariate statistics, bi meaning two variable statistics. Um, but for now, we're going to stick with a couple of different types of univariate statistics. So to start off with, um, we are doing something that is called a descriptive statistic. And descriptive statistics describe the data. And so we are trying to describe our sample and allow the reader or whoever we're presenting to to understand um, the makeup of our sample. Who was in our sample? What were they like? Um, just describing the data. So frequency distributions do just that. They describe the frequency or how often someone responded a given way. So a frequency distribution is simply a table of information. It's a table that um, tells the, the viewer or the reader or the listener uh, how many people responded in each way. Or if we're not talking about people, if we're talking about schools or places or other uh, levels of measurement or units of analysis, uh, then that works as well. So when you are creating a frequency distribution, you're going to start with a table. So you're going to start by thinking about the variable and we're going to write in the categories of that variable. So I'm going to do a simple numeric level variable. So we're going to do number of siblings. All right, so that's going to be my variable that we are analyzing or doing a frequency distribution of. All right, so with the categories for my variable, because it's a numeric variable, I want to put those categories in order from least to most or lowest to highest, right? So this is going to make it make more sense when you're viewing it, right? So I'm going to start with zero, um, and I'm just going to write in one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to have a five plus. So this represents those who have five or more siblings. So we're kind of taking this from a numeric variable and making it into sort of a categorical variable by doing that. And then at the bottom below that, I'm going to have a total. And so this total is going to allow me to kind of add up each of my columns and kind of what's in each. Um, and so then my second column here is going to be represented by the letter F. And it is the frequency, or how often was this answer choice given, right? So how many people, in this case, answered that they have zero siblings? How many people answered that they have one? So this is pretty simple to figure out. If you've got some data, a range, um, you're just going to go through and count up how many people said zero, how many people said one, so on and so forth. So for our data, uh, for simplicity's sake, we are going to say that three people have zero siblings, um, four people have one sibling, uh, two people have two siblings, zero people have three, um, one person has four, and zero people have five plus. So then if I total all this up, I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I have a total of 10 respondents here. Um, and so this 10, this total, is also known as n. So in all of our statistical calculations, this 10, uh, or this total, is represented by the letter n. So n equals total. So the next column that I'm going to have is my cumulative frequency column, or a QMF. And this column is what I'll call a running total, right? So this is just a running total of all of the people in my survey or in my sample. And so I'm going to start my cumulative frequency for the first column, or the sorry, the first row, is always the same as the frequency. So here it's going to be 3. So our cumulative frequency is just the same as the frequency for the first category. For the second category, I'm going to add so I'm going to add my frequency for the second category, so for people who have one sibling, I'm going to add that to the frequency of those who have zero siblings. So that's going to give me 7, because 3 plus 4 is 7. 
So then I'm, for the next category, I'm simply going to add again. And so I'm going to add 2 to 7, and that's going to give me 9. So I'm going to add again, and 0 plus 9 is 9. And then I add my 1, and I get 10 for uh, the category of 4. And then for my last category of 5 plus, we're adding 0 once again, and so we're still going to have 10. So this is a running total. Your um, number here in this last category should always be the same as your n. You should always have the same number there uh, if it, you've done it properly. All right, so my next column, I'm going to move over to this side. My next column is going to be a percent column. Right, so this is going to tell me what percent of people or respondents answered in a given way. So percent is calculated by taking the frequency and dividing that by n and then multiplying all of that by 100. It's important that you multiply it by 100 so that you um, keep the decimals in the right place, right? So if you don't multiply it, you're going to have what's called a proportion, um, which is fine. Proportions are interesting, um, but percentages are easier for most people to understand. So that's going to be our free, uh, equation for a percentage. So for the first percentage, we're going to have 3 divided by 10 times 100, which is going to give us 30%. Now we're getting nice even numbers because we have an n of 10, but if you were to have decimals, you would go to two decimal places. Um, and so you would want to leave the f over n in your calculator until after you multiply it by 100. Um, that way you can still have two decimal places even when it's a percentage. All right, so our next one, we have four divided by 10 times 100 is going to give us 40%. And then for two siblings, we have an, a frequency of 2 divided by our n, which is 10, times 100. And that's going to give us 20%. All right? And then for three siblings, we have no one. So 0 over 10 times 100 is going to give us 0%. And then we have 1 over 10 times 100, and that's going to be um, 10%. And then our last one, we have another 0%. So we're not going to have to write that out again because we've already shown our work up here. So if you've already done it once, you can kind of skip it. All right, so when I add all of this up, and if I were to total this, this should equal 100%. Now, if you're rounding, um, if you don't have a nice even number like we do here, it may not quite equal 100. Um, it might equal 99.99% or 100.01, but it should be really, really close if you've done it correctly. All right, so that's our fourth column. Now we have one more column, and that last column is going to be the cumulative percent. All right, and so the cumulative percent column is the same as the cumulative frequency, only you're doing it with the percentages. So we can simply add the percentages as we go. So it's going to be kind of a running total of the percentages. So if we start here, we're going to have in this first uh, box, we're going to have 30%. And then we're going to add the percent for four siblings plus the percent for, or sorry, the percent for one sibling plus the percent for zero siblings. And so you're going to have 70%. So then we're add the percent for two siblings, which is 20%, and so we'll have a total of 90%. And then if we add zero, we're going to have 90% again. And then we add 10%, which will give us 100%. And then we add zero, and that gives us 100% again. So again, when you are done here, this 100%, this should always be 100%. Now again, if you're rounding because you've got two decimal places, you're going to maybe end up with a 99.99 or a 100.01, and that's okay. Um, but it should be really close to 100%.
So that's all it is. That's a frequency distribution. That's not so hard. Um, the difficult part, or what I found in my experience that students have difficulty with, is the interpretation of the frequency distribution. So when I say interpretation, what I'm talking about is how do I put this table into words? So an interpretation is simply a written explanation of the data and of the table, right? And so you should be able to read the interpretation and if you're not looking at the table, it should make perfect sense, right? Um, and so you can do it that way. Um, so there are a couple of different ways that I can interpret this. One of the things I'm going to want to look for is I'm going to want to look for anything that stands out out of the ordinary. So I might want to talk about what has the highest frequency. So maybe I'm going to kind of um, zero in on this four people who have um, one sibling. And maybe I'm going to say something about the most common response that was given in this survey was one sibling. And four people gave that response. I could also do the same thing with the percentage. I could say something about how um, the highest percentage of responses was in the category of one sibling, right? So there are lots of different ways that I can say this. Um, there are different ways that are just going to come out sounding more natural. Um, you can use the cumulative percent column to kind of talk about groups of people, not just individual categories. So I can say that 90%, so if I'm pointing to kind of this category here, 90% of our respondents had two or fewer siblings, right? Um, another thing that you can do with the cumulative percent column is you can talk about what are called percentiles, right? Do you remember this idea of percentiles when you were a kid doing standardized tests? Well, percentiles are where do you kind of fall in this cumulative percent? So right now, um, I am a little bit obsessed with percentiles for baby weight gain and height and head circumference uh, because every time we go to the doctor, they tell us what percentile our child is in. So right now, my baby is in the 50th percentile for weight, which means that 50% of the kids in the world or babies at her age at one year old who are female um, are smaller than her. And 50% of the babies that are her age are bigger than her weight wise. Um, so she is right in the middle at 50%. Now her height is in the 25th percentile, which means that 25% of the babies are shorter than her and 75% of the babies are taller than her. So percentiles allow us to kind of look at an individual response and where it fits in the whole, kind of where it fits in the scheme of things, right? And so that's one way that you can use this cumulative percent column. All right, so now that we have done this by hand and we've done this on the board, um, the next step then is to do this in SPSS. So there is another tutorial that's posted on how to do this in SPSS, and also make sure to take the quiz for today. All right, thank you guys, and have a great day.